hospital hires Muslim surgeon for diversity, horrified by what he collects from patients when a hospital added a surgeon to their medical staff, they thought he was the perfect hire to add diversity and multiculturalism to their team. However, despite years of complaints concerning the doctor, the facility finally discovered the sadistic collection that he had accumulated from dozens of his unfortunate patients. As the West strives to achieve the left's multicultural dream, we find that they are forcing diversity as the Islamic community has too few positive societal contributions to give, lacking more than any other major religion in revolutionary scientists, inventors, and humanitarians. Islam's expertise remains to produce militant terrorists, religious tyrants, and genocide. Of course, even those Muslims who attain a higher education and give back to humanity are still prone to use their privileged platform to enact their religion's barbaric compulsions. When Dr. Manish Shah, 47, was hired by the General Medical Council, there's no doubt that they had eyeballed his religious and cultural diversity as a bonus. While demonstrating his medical talents at the surgery center as a general practitioner from 2006 until 2013, the directorial staff received a startling number of complaints concerning Shah that they finally couldn't ignore. What they discovered was even worse than they feared. Daily Mail reports that in August 2014, the London hospital suspended Shah when a total of 54 of his female patients, some as young as 13 claimed that the Muslim doctor had sexually abused them during their visits. Between June 2004 and July 2013, Shah is suspected of committing a whopping 118 heinous sexual offenses against dozens of women and children. The medical center first suspended Shah for just four months in August 2014 due to the growing number of accusations. His temporary removal became a full year after undisclosed interim conditions were placed on him, ultimately leading to the council extending his suspension on a yearly basis since then. The NHS website stated that Shah had performed many minor surgeries, although his main practice is in family planning. He was said to fit and remove coils for contraceptive purposes in female patients, according to Breitbart. It is suspected that these minor surgeries may have allowed Shah to initiate some of the sexual abuse, but this has not been confirmed. When Mail Online asked a staff member why Shah is still listed on the website as working one day each week, they were reportedly unaware of the description, assuring that he is not practicing at least for the time being. We do not comment on ongoing investigations, a spokesman for GMC said. Dr. Manish Shah had conditions placed on his practice in 2013 preventing him from seeing female patients alone, and was suspended from the register in 2014. This means he has been unable to practice since then. In matters where a doctor is subject to a criminal investigation, our own investigation process cannot continue until criminal proceedings have ended. Daily Mail previously reported that dozens of felons were allowed to continue practicing medicine without having their medical licenses revoked, despite being convicted of serious sexual offenses. According to this report, Shah could later return to accepting patients even if he is found guilty of some of the charges. Police have been investigating Shah since the summer of 2013 after several patients filed sexual abuse complaints against the doctor. He is scheduled to appear at Barkingside Magistrates Court on bail on August 31st. Although leftists might trivialize or defend Shah's actions by claiming that the accusations against him are rooted in racism and Islamophobia, three out of four doctors suspended from the medical register in the UK were foreign doctors. Statistics show that doctors trained overseas are five times more likely to be suspended than those trained in the UK. While foreign medical training is a justifiable concern for the UK, religious beliefs should also be taken into consideration with these criminal doctors. For Muslim men with an insatiable sexual appetite, the Quran repeatedly mandates that taking non-Muslim women and children as sex slaves against their will is justified because, until Islam is the only religion on earth, Muslims are at war with unbelievers. Ensuring that Muslims would never mistake these commands figuratively, the Islamic prophet Muhammad took sex slaves and even encouraged his men to rape the women in front of their captive husbands. Islam legalizes rape slavery, and many other inhumanities by the claim that Muslims are superior to non-Muslims and women in general. As such, it is cultural suicide to raise its adherents to esteemed positions in which they have even more power to practice their ideologies' violent and oppressive commands.